we actually contemplated Girl State before we made Boy State. We were uh, contacting the programs in both programs in Texas. And actually, we, we ended up getting access to Boy State um, first. And so and that, that was actually the program that had drawn us, drawn our attention initially, was Boy State had voted to secede from the union in 2017 in Texas. And that was the subject of some news attention. So that, that caught our eye. But we were just intrigued by the program for both boys and girls and, and wanted to explore it. And so we ended up getting access to Boy State and it was a good time to do that. And um, But um, always in our mind was the desire to and, and really need to make this companion film. We call it a, a sibling, not a sequel. And so, um, Immediately after finishing Boy State in 2020 and premiering the film and the reception the film got, we were motivated to begin conversations with girls' state programs around the country and um, audition them and, and uh, wanted to leave Texas. The country's big and diverse. And um, so we ended up um, finding a program in Missouri that we loved. And uh, it's an interesting state politically. And so uh, in 2022, we went to Missouri to make girls' state. process makes it sound so organized. Um, it was a journey of four to five months before this, the kids were going to convene in, uh, in the suburb of St. Louis. Um, we talked on Zoom to hundreds of kids who were headed to the program um, who wanted to talk to us. Um, and then from there whittled it down to a smaller group that we then went to visit in Missouri in their homes to see what they had on their walls, to meet their families, meet their dogs, watch them do their extracurricular activities. We met all kinds of amazing people, but then it was pretty clear who that very small group was that was going to be comfortable and with having a camera on them for as much as we were going to have a camera on them. And uh, they just had the confidence, the political confidence and ambition to do well in the Girl State program. Um, so we wanted to follow them for that reason, but they also had the sort of emotional intelligence and confidence to share how they were feeling while a camera was on them, which is really not everybody. And so we were lucky enough to have met seven um, extraordinary kids um, who all had very different paths through the program and different backgrounds. And that was important to us, you know, kid from a small, small rural town, um, you know, a very conservative kid, a very liberal kid, all that stuff. We needed the range of kids that we found. I think the approach to, to Girl State was similar, but different. Um, I mean, the program is similar in that it lasts a, a week and it's run in ways that were familiar to us, but um, it was important to us to let the film let the story be what it would be and not impose a sort of arbitrary structure on it. And, and that meant two important differences with Girl State. One was we had a much bigger cast. We have um, seven girls in the film. Boy State has four boys. And two is we made room for a second storyline. It's not just running for governor, which is the highest office at Girl State. It's the formation of the Supreme Court, an all-female Supreme Court. It's going to hear one case. In this case, it's a, an abortion case. And so we had big cast, two stories, and we weren't sure we could accommodate all, all of that in, in a single film, but we needed to try. And um, also just to kind of surrender to what, where the story took us um, individually with all of these seven characters. And um, it, it was quick to shoot, but very long to edit over a year just to figure out how to put the pieces together. And um, to, to make sure that everything that remained really belonged in the film. And I think importantly to approximate emotionally the experience we as directors had going through this with the girls that we had cast. I think that's really important. It's not, the film is not a sort of clinical political exercise. It's really an emotional experience um, getting to know these young women. And I think capturing that emotional journey um, was important. I think that actually was a different uh, part of my experience making Girl State from making Boy State was feeling the, um, there was this other theme to explore, um, namely 
the lack of female representation in our country, um, which I think we worked very hard to make clear as a stake at the beginning of the film in the title sequence, just reminding people because it's it's sort of been such a fact of our country for so long that it's not something that um, I think people talk about enough, frankly, um, or question enough, frankly. Um, so, you know, this current Congress is 118th Congress, is, I think has the most women representatives that we've ever had, but it's only 28%. You know, which is just if you if you think about it, if you think about it, even for one more second than usual, it's just so outrageous to me in my lifetime. Right. All these first the first elected governor who, who didn't get the position because her husband had died uh, the for, in my lifetime, the first Supreme Court justice in my lifetime, the first like Speaker of the House, like all these firsts in just my lifetime, let alone like my grandmother's lifetime was like um still when women couldn't vote so it's all kind of recent and i think that i i just in making this film it all became much clearer to me also what these kids are up against i hadn't really recognized it so clearly as myself as a teenager but to watch them go through a program that lacks the equity equitable funding to watch them go through a program that has different expectations for these girls who are just as ambitious just as smart just as educated um uh, as the boys was just it was it was to see it so visible in my face was was actually kind of shocking really um and anyway to to meet these girls who are know this is what they're up against um and certainly the roe v wade um decision coming out or leaking a week before they all convened at this session it was on their mind um to have it sort of be this bittersweet moment of empowerment um, in the program, but also bitter in the sense of, of, of a reminder of all the, um, everything that they were also going to be up against was just, I found it refreshing to be with kids who who could hold both those truths at the same time, be both energized and aware of, of, of what they're up against, not naive, but optimistic. The surprises of the film are, are the surprises we hope for in documentary filmmaking, which is um, just going on these journeys with people that are unexpected and um, they surprise us. They surprise themselves um, with Emily in particular, uh, her, her path through Girl State, um, her race for governor. Um, this is somebody who's announced she's going to run for president in 2040. And to watch where she ends up after this week-long experience is remarkable. And I, I think it's exciting to invite audiences to go on that journey with her, but also the other girls who, who come to know themselves in, I think, very profound ways and confront um, surprising defeats and new friendships and um, remarkable upset victories just in all of the um, um, dramas that a week of Girl State can contain. I think we, we capture it all. And um, it certainly, I, I don't think we could have predicted. We know enough not to try to predict how people are going to do in this program. I think it's a real crucible. I think what was exciting about the race for governor is we have candidates we're following who have very different strategies and we get to see how they all go through this difficult process in, in different ways. Um, so I think that's I think one those are that's a surprise. I think also watching the girls come to question the disparities and funding and resources and expectations between the two programs was not something we anticipated. We knew that the programs would be held concurrently on campus, um, which is a first in their 80 year history, but had no uh, understanding that that would figure so significantly in the drama. And I think comments so powerfully on the state of our society as a whole and the diminished expectations and um, uh, lower resources available to women and as explanations for why they're not in more positions of political power and more equitably represented in the halls of power in our country. Watching the film with the girls at Sundance was um, extraordinary and kind of exceeded even, I, I knew it was going to be exciting, you know, to 
watch the film on a big screen with a big audience with our big cast. <laughs> but I think it it was so emotional um, for, for all of us, um, I think for the reasons we've been talking about, which is representation. Um, here were these incredibly bright, beautiful um, young leaders uh, giving it their all and um, having a room full of, what is it, 1,300 people respond to that, cheer for them, cry for them, laugh. There's a lot of laughter. That was great because I think all these things are part of the human experience. And to me, documentary you know, needs all of those things. Um, but to, to have that big embrace um, was hugely meaningful, not obviously to us just as, as storytellers, but hu hugely meaningful to all those kids. And then they got the stage afterwards to, 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 to do a Q and A and speak their mind, speak their truth, be, be themselves and they're powerful people. So that was um, an extraordinary moment. Well, we have two teenage daughters. Um, Zoe is uh, now 17, but she worked as a production assistant on Girl State, um, celebrated her 16th birthday during production, serenaded by 500 girls, which was terrifying and memorable for her. Um, our 14 year old um, couldn't work on the film, but um, we shared a rough cut with her. We told her all about production and she had a, 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 an important note. Um, she said- um, Oh, afterwards. hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. The, during production, I just want to make it clear that um, all the kids at the camp, one of the icebreakers really was like singing songs together. So kids who'd never met and whose politics were diametrically opposed would sing um, a lot of songs together. And not surprisingly, one of the great unifying <laughs> uh, anthems, or many of them, were Taylor Swift songs. So I'd explain this to our 14 year old, how many Taylor Swift songs um, all these kids at camp would burst out and they knew every single word. And it was like full throated, like, ah, like it was very joyful. And so when Abby, our 14 year old watched, it was part of a rough cut screening. People had notes, but her, her note was, you know, she was disappointed that there was not one of these Taylor Swift sing-alongs. She's a Swifty. So, um, she said that that was a real disappointment that there was no Taylor Swift in the movie. Uh, and so what happened then? Well, we, we said that's a, a good note. And um, we um, uh, we wanted to use um, a Taylor Swift song, The Man, uh, which is perfect for the end credits of the film. And um, we were able to get permission to, to use it. Um, and I think, so I think we found the right place in the right way and the right song uh, for Taylor Swift to be in the movie. So I, that's credit to Abby for um, showing us the way. I think the, the film has a, a lot of take, takeaways. I think it's the power of the story. It's about seven girls who have this experience. I think you can come and make a connection with different girls, maybe uh, one or maybe more. But I think, um, and, and they come from across the political spectrum. They have very different backgrounds. Um, and I think they're all committed to throw themselves into this process um, to speak truth to power. They're incredibly impressive. and. So I think that that the film has has many takeaways. I think it's part of the value of of these films too, both boy state and girl state. Is we live in such divided political times, and I think the film creates a space for conversation for people of different backgrounds. I mean, the program brings people together with, from different backgrounds, but the films themselves, I think, continue that conversation in theaters and in living rooms at home. After you watch it, you can um, identify with characters who are different. You can. Um, you know, see things differently depending on who you are and what's important to you. But I think ultimately it celebrates a couple of, of values and virtues in American life. One is that democracy is not a spectator sport, that you have to throw yourself into this process to make it better. And it's a continual process. And that um, uh, what's inspiring about this film is that, that these young women are not um, deterred by the divisiveness of our times. They are committed to reach across the aisle and forge connections and friendships with one another despite differences. And I think that that that's a hopeful message that audiences, regardless of their backgrounds, will take away from this story.
I would say the three words I would use, um, tiring, um, exciting, and um, empowering. I was going to say empowering, fun, and quick pace. Yeah, I'd go intense, fascinating, and I'm sensing a theme here, empowering. <laughs> Um, the three words I would use to describe girls state would be fast paced, um, sure, empowering. You, you got to have empowering in there. I don't know what else mm -hmm. you have. Um, and then emotionally intense. I know that's not one word, but emotional. I have a blast working with Amanda and Jesse and being a part of the documentary as a whole, the entire production team and crew that were following us were so kind and encouraging throughout the entire week. And I definitely felt supported behind the scenes, which is really nice to have that support system. Because when you think about it, the camera crew that would follow us each individually were with us more than anybody else throughout the day. So it's, it's really nice to have such a supportive team to work with. So I was followed a little bit less than some of the other girls. So for me, working with Amanda and Jesse was a bit different in the sense that I had no clue when a camera was going to show up or when they weren't. As I was just kind of going about my day, doing whatever I wanted. And sometimes I would have a whole conversation with someone, turn around and only then realize that it was filmed. So it was, I think it was interesting in a lot of ways but it wasn't necessarily a huge factor in my girl state experience. I think um, similar to Nisha, um, I wasn't followed until halfway through the week. So I had like the first three days where I was just like, just going to camp. And then um, the second half when like the camera was there. And I just remember thinking it was like the coolest thing ever. Like there's a camera on me. I have a microphone. I like people have like a boom mic over me. So I think um, it definitely added to the experience. It was really awesome. Yeah, the filmmaking process and working with Amanda and Jesse and the co-producers and the people who lugged around the giant cameras and boom mics um, was super special and really great. I'm glad that I was able to meet the film crew. I thought those were some of the most important people that I met at Girls State. Um, I would have been fine if the documentary like never came out. Like that's how much I enjoyed working with um, the the filming team. Um, that's really all I have to say. I don't know. <laughs> I hope that audiences, especially teenage girls and girls in general, I hope everybody takes their girls to go see Girls State. Um, but I hope that they take away the idea that you can. You can do things, big things as a woman. And I think that it's important for you to go for it just as much as it is for anybody else to go for it. And you're entitled to that and you are capable of that. Um, I think I would say just um, don't compare yourself to others. We're all scared. We're all afraid. We're all anxious. Um, it's so easy to see people around you and think that they're not, you know, as terrified as you are, but they probably are. So just kind of seeing the behind the scenes of that, just, you know, make sure you don't watch a documentary and think I could never be them because you are us. We're, we're the same as you guys are. And we were the same back then. I hope that teenage girls take away the idea that it is okay to make mistakes or lose something. You are still capable. You can still do whatever you wanna do in the future. And speaking your mind is a good thing. Even when it's hard, if you really believe in something, it is worthwhile to say it. And those are lessons that I very much learned at Girl State. I think that young women should take away from the film that going after what you want doesn't have to be this massive and intimidating process. Even if the position that you're trying to obtain is massive or intimidating. I don't know. Yeah, like please, young women should not be terrified 
to make mistakes while they are vying for positions of leadership. They are, they are so important. Every single young woman should be a leader somewhere. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a public speaker. It doesn't mean that you have to act or dress in a certain way or be a certain personality type. There is a place for every single young girl to be a part of politics um, and work their way up into leadership positions. I would say that it didn't necessarily sway me at all on um, a career in politics. <clears throat> I definitely went into it wanting a career in politics and journalism. I'm still there right now, but I'm also open to the idea of when opportunity knocks, opening the door. So wherever I go, I think it'll be determined by what opportunities knock at the door, depending on what media outlets you know I might potentially work for, my impact, what kind of career in politics I have. And... You know, sometimes the idea of running for president, like I, you know, always said that I wanted to in the film and growing up some days that feels like a really a lot. <laughs> and I'm like, but you get to live in a cool White House. So, you know, there's there's good and bad. But overall, I think that as we all grow up, it, the opportunities that open they that open themselves and present themselves to us will determine what I end up doing. But I don't think I fully know yet where I'll be in 16 years, but we'll see. I think more than kind of swaying me towards a career in politics, Girl State taught me that even if you don't want to make it your career, politics is still important for everyone. Like right now, I'm an engineering major. I think so is Cece. Like it doesn't mean that we have less of a place speaking out about issues that are important to us. There was still a way to get involved, even if it's not your career. I've met girls at Girls State who want to go into cardiovascular research or are currently in pre-med. And that's that's still important. It is still important to have those voices in our political systems. Yeah, Girls State didn't necessarily um, pushed me towards a career in politics. It solidified my idea of a career in politics and it made it believable. It was then obtainable. I, I could see myself actually functioning in a real life political position, um, more so with those smaller governmental positions within the local and county governments. Um, and so I'm really thankful that I was able to be a part of the program because I, I don't know if I would have truly believed myself when I said that I wanted a career within the political field. Yeah, I think I agree so much with um, what Faith and um, Nisha said. Um, I'm not engineering, but I am doing, my friends are going to make fun of me for saying this, but I'm doing computer science-ish. Um, and so I don't really know. But I also think what Faith said is so true. Um, like, it made me, like, maybe I don't know if I want to do politics, but it made me think, wow, I actually could be successful at this, which is, I think, I mean, that's huge for me. I mean, just being able to say to myself, oh, wait, I could be good at this. And I think no matter what, I'll be involved in politics. And Girl State definitely convinced me that no matter where I am in life, I want to be involved in politics. So, yeah. 